your seat. How you doing? I'm very well. You're looking Thank lovely. You. Thank you very much. So do you. Do I take it that Into the Future is your favorite on the album? Hmm. I still haven't been able to pick one favorite because you know with the way the album is, you kind of have a favorite every other day. So I mean, Into the Future is definitely one of those um, favorites. Why that one in particular? Um, it's a nice vibe. I know what you're trying to say, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I like the song. And, okay. Yeah. But you also worked on the album. I kind of made an appearance on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You can say that. How did that happen? So that's actually very interesting. Um, it was one weekend we were at home and then Stone said, oh, let's go somewhere. You know, he wanted to get out of town for a bit. So we drove out to the Volta. Um, there's this hotel over there on the beach, you okay. know, nice setting. Nice. He wanted to kind of just get away for a bit. But then we took his producer with us so he could, you know, draw some inspiration and record. Mm. So um, we were all sitting by the um, beach and then he was recording. Mm -hmm. And you know, before they record, they usually play the instrumentals a few times and exactly. then catch a vibe and then, you know, do a freestyle or something. So he was saying something and he said something about reptiles. Yeah. And I was dozing off and then I just said reptile and gentile. And hey. then he was like, <laughs> okay. And then he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so I went and took a nap. And by the time I came back, he was done with the song. And they had actually um, pulled out my, the vocals, what yeah. I said. And then they used that as the intro of the song. Just like that? Just like that. So that's how that happened. So, so wait. <laughs> <laughs> Do I take it then that you are going into music, kind of? Oh, definitely not. That's, that's not. Uh, let's leave the music to Stone Boy. I think oh. I'm very comfortable in um, my field. and Which is mm -hmm. medicine. Yes. So. But what, dentistry to be precise? Yes. Yes. I remember I met you the first time. She was yes. this shy looking young lady. Yes. And we're all very young then. This yes. was what, 2016 when I Yes, 2016, you? yes. And you swept six out of nine awards. Yeah. Let's go back to that time because I'm sure a lot of people were wowed by how all that happened. And now here you are, years later, married to Stobo. Tell mm -hmm. me a bit about, you know, school, KNUSD, and how that went for you. Um, so school was. Um, I think I enjoyed my time in school. I was always striving for the best in terms of the academics, always trying to put in the work to make sure I was always on top and mm -hmm. all of that. And at the same time, I also had a side hustle I was doing in school as well. So that kind of always put me, I was always, you know, on my toes to yeah. try and get things done. I hear you were and fashion then, well. Yes, yes. I had a side, life. yes, I had a side fashion business where I used to um, design and make shoes and bags mm. made in Ghana. Okay. And so, yeah, that was on the side. And then, you know, I had the school stuff going on. Did you give I that went. up? The fashion part? Uh, of no, okay. it's still there, but it's, I'm doing more of, I'm doing it more on a large scale. So I don't really need to advertise it much. So, mm. but that's also still there. But I see that you've moved on to become a global ambassador for what? World Oral Health Day yeah. and all that. So that means you've really grown in your space. Yes, I have. And that's beautiful to watch, thank is it not? You. Thank you, thank you. But tell me about, you know, how the journey has been for you in the field of medicine and eventually becoming an ambassador for many brands. Yes. So, um, well, with me, when I started, naturally, I'm very low key. So, um, you know, I was just sticking to my work, you know, and everything. Funny enough, like you're saying, um, I was you were actually the only person or the first person. Yeah, I don't really do much interview. So well, your interview was the first one I did after mm -hmm. school because they, um, it was two of us, two ladies yes. that swept all the awards. Yes. So it was kind of like a big deal. And yeah. we did a couple of interviews. So on that day, I don't know if you remember, but Stone kept texting in the show. He was. And I was like, oh, God, because before I went, I told him, make sure. At that time, we were dating, so no one knew about me. I so see. I was like, make sure you don't. He was like, hmm, I'll today. I'll tell everybody. I'm like, no, no, make sure you don't. So in the, uh, during the interview, he kept texting in and saying, oh, wow, she's very brilliant. Congrats to her and all oh. that. And it, when anytime you read the message, my heart just <laughs> sank. I was like, he's going to give us away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then... Um, from that time on, we went on to get married, you know. A year later, right? A year, yeah, a year later. And, you know. I'm so naive. <laughs> I, I didn't pick on any of the clues Yeah, at you all. didn't. Yeah, like we pulled the fast one. You did? Yeah, but then um, I went, we, after we got married, obviously, it came with a lot of publicity and things like that. And I realized that I wanted to use my platform or the following that I had to kind of impact the people who were following me. So... I noticed that kind of knowledge gap, even from school. Sometimes people come in and gen they genuinely do not know about certain conditions and mm. what um, things that affect their health and all of that. So I then decided to use my platform 
um, for some of these things. Yeah. And um, it actually ended up attracting some of these eyes, like the World Dental Federation reaching out to me and saying that, you know, That's huge. that was huge to make me a global ambassador for World Oral Health Day and okay. things like that. So I think that, you know, as we've gone along the journey, we've matured and, you know, we've got more eyes on us. Yeah. And so we are pushed to do even more. How's influencing been like in terms of impact? Because I know that every week as well, you put out, you know, some tidbits on how to take care of your, yes. um, your teeth, your yes. everything. Yes, I, you, um, Dr. Kofi, he was just here. He was my junior in school. When I saw him, I didn't make him up because now he's all you buff, buff and yeah. everything. So he came and he's actually a twin. So he was asking if I remembered him because they always used to come and meet me at the library or at the study room and ah. leave. You know, when they leave, I'll still be there and they'll be asking, won't you leave and things mm -hmm. like that. So um, he's also doing great with influencing and all of that. It's um, a space that now we found ourselves in. You know, social media is such a great tool to use for anything for your business mm -hmm. and for educating people and all of that. So I um, have kind of, I'm still figuring it out, but I have kind of figured out how it works. People want to be ent um, entertained, mm -hmm. and at the same time, they would like to learn. But if you come straight to them with, you know, like a lecture, yeah. you don't engage them as much. So True. that's what I've been, you know, taking advantage of with the TikTok and all the, the Instagram. And things like how did you pick this up? Is it from, you know, what you saw your husband do over time? Yes, definitely. Okay. Definitely, I have picked up a few so things. So he's influenced your style of influencing? Yeah, I would say that. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'll say that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see. I know you do a lot of charity. We'll come to that. But you mm -hmm. let's talk about Stoneball <laughs> and how that is going. Because, again, like you said, he almost wanted to give you up during that interview in 2016. Yeah. But you weren't comfortable yeah. with it. So does it mean that the spotlight is really not your thing? Um, I think I have kind of gone spotlight. You know, let me um, give you a bit of a perspective. Generally, when you strive to do the best in anything, the spotlight kind of naturally comes to you mm. so like i'm saying um i had that interview with you at the time you didn't even know you know who, that i was with stone or whatever and it has kind of followed me all through mm. like from school i held a few leadership positions and so i kind of did have the spotlight at certain points i yeah. mean then as god would have it i ended up marrying somebody who is definitely in the spotlight so yeah. Yeah. You know, I think I've kind of adjusted, or, or maybe all of those were building me up, yeah. and I've kind of adjusted to... So you're enjoying yeah. all the attention. I'm still very low-key, and you, I see you that. notice that it took a while for me to even make my social media pages public. Yeah. I've been running away from this interview and so many I other know. interviews. <laughs> if I tell you how long I've been chasing <laughs> Louisa for the, maybe a year or maybe less. Yeah, almost a year. Yes. Yeah. No, but I'm grateful that you came. Yeah. And I know as you're talking about wanting to be that private person, then your kids also come into yeah. it. And you have two beautiful kids. Yes, thank you. I so do. we have what, Jiduda? Yeah, Jidula and Janam. Jidula and Janam. Yes. What does Janam mean? Janam um, is rain. It's, oh. it's Ewe, so okay. to rain. And then Jidula means a winner. How are you able to protect them and shield them from all the attention? Because whether you like it or not, yeah. now both of you are celebrities yes. and everybody wants to know everything about you. That's definitely true. Um, you know, I used to post them a lot when they were... Um, a bit younger because yeah. they are definitely two very entertaining kids you always have a funny video that you want to share but at the same time sometimes you're like oh, do i want everybody to see this yeah. so i think now i'm beginning to have some form of balance in terms of what i put out there but at the same time when i don't they get more engagement even than i do when i post on their social media they have it? tons and tons of views and all of that so people definitely want to see that but you know i'm we're trying to control that because now they're growing as yeah. well. And so we don't want to put them out there too much. Yeah, but I, I've seen some videos of Jidula. Yes. Rapping, singing. She's a star girl, so she's always... They both like, you know, they are very much like their dad. Yeah. They are entertainers, naturally okay. entertaining. So um, they, we have a lot of that. You know, so that we don't have a likely dentist between the two of them at the moment? At this point, I can't really tell. Hey, okay. <laughs> I can't really tell, but let's see how it goes let's as they see. go, you know. But did you guys see some videos of Jidula when she was singing? Oh, you loved it, huh? I can imagine. But having all that and still juggling, you know, your work, taking care of your kids and your family, dealing with everybody on social media, how do you do it? Um, hmm. Hmm. I have to kind of decode that in my mind. Generally, I think that it's all about, you know, trying to 
find a balance and you know you have all of these things that you have to do so now what do we do yeah you have to kind of plan you have to be intentional about a couple of things like spending time with the kids because that's very important yeah. they always need you there to share moments with you and then also work has to be done mm -hmm. so it's i think planning goes a long way in terms of having short-term goals long-term goals what you want to do and then also being intentional about you know being present at yeah. every point in time for anything that requires your attention mm. and then of course there's the god factor that sometimes we tend to overlook but yeah you know his grace is always sufficient and always you know hallelujah hallelujah together. somebody so, should, amen. I, should i put you on the spot <laughs> no please don't Please oh, don't. You don't want I, to tell I know where you're your, going. your favorite read, memory there. I've read your mind. Please don't go there. But yeah, God is good all the time. <laughs> hey, okay. We'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. But yeah. but you got married at what age? 22? 23? 20, 25? 25 yeah. thereabout. On hindsight, would you say it was too early? No. Would you have waited no. a little longer? For? For marriage. Why wait? Why not wait? Um, so I think that, you know, life is not you know, a linear process where you have to wait to accomplish this and have 100% success in this before you move to the next thing. If it happens and you feel like it is right, you have the support of your family, mm -hmm. you know, I think you should definitely go for it. I'm um, somebody who is very ambitious and goal-oriented and same as Stone. So um, I noticed that he was going to be a great helper for me to achieve my, pursue and achieve my personal yeah. goals. And so, I mean, that, I think, put it all together for me and it helps. So I think that, um, I don't think I got married too early. Too early. And I think I'm still um, um, pursuing my dreams yes, and all of that. Are. So I'm, the job is getting done. You said something very important. So you noticed something about him that made you make the decision. The mm -hmm. fact that he was going to help you also achieve your goals. Yes. Just like you'd help him. So yes. you'd say that that thing is very important in choosing a partner? Yes. I tell you, even when I was in school, like these are some of the little things that, you know, tell you a lot about the person. When I was in school and, you know, I was, I'm studying for exams and things like that. You know, he works a lot at night too. They are always in the studio and stuff. And he knows maybe I'm studying. I'm staying up to study. He stays up with me, keeps calling, are you still awake? You know, he would actually quiz you about what you learned to make sure that you weren't dozing off. Those kind of little things, you know, kind of. <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah, I mean, imagine he'll say, okay, send me the slides you were reading. He'll go through and he'll ask you a question on slide maybe 25. But did he even sure. understand what he was reading? No, but at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, he was, you know, putting me on my toes to make sure that I know I'm going to be quiz, so I better read and understand this yeah. thing. So those kind of little things were all green flags that, yeah. you know, helped to um, make that decision. I won't lie, people were actually surprised in a very good way yeah. when you guys came together. And I'm sure you saw all those posts as well. I did. Like, Stone Boy has like, gotten one of the best women in Ghana. Yeah. She's someone who's bagged awards in school, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I that must have that. felt good, huh? Yeah, but at that time, I was still trying to hide. I was like, how? Because we tried to keep the wedding a secret, but I mean. We found out. Looking, look, think, looking back, I don't even know how we thought that was going to happen. You didn't invite me. <laughs> That's just by the way, I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, I know, but, but then, yeah. yes. Um, um, we kind of got it to work eventually, and we're here and now. And here you are. Yeah. But most importantly, I'm impressed with how you've grown your brand, like you said, all the great things that you're doing. You represent a number of brands, and yeah. you're also doing your best to educate people. Yes. What would you advise people, first thing to do when they wake up in the morning, with regards to keeping their dental hygiene okay. intact? Okay, all right. So it's important. First of all, there are a few basics. Brushing your teeth, flossing, extremely important sometimes we, we because we do it every day and we think that it's a basic thing it's so important you should definitely not don't leave your house if you haven't brushed your teeth that's hmm. one thing i'll tell you other people and, who actually do that yeah sometimes you know they someone is busy they just you know rinse their mouth and then they leave home hey. yeah <laughs> so that is definitely important. important and then um don't only go to see the dentist when you have pain or don't yeah. only go to the hospital generally mm. when there's a problem because now we're moving towards preventive medicine yeah uh, there's so many things that could be wrong and you can't tell and a lot of the time I tell people that the dentist office is one place where chance findings happen a lot okay and you know a lot of the systemic diseases things that happen in your body they tell in your mouth oh, okay. so the, your dentist can look in your mouth and tell you that there's signs and symptoms that you may be having anemia or you could be having some form of kidney problems because... By looking in your mouth? Yes. 
and we shouldn't be losing people um, to conditions like oral cancer yeah. and um, uh, Ludwig's angina and abscesses yeah. and things like that. So. I see. Yeah. Dance hall music mm -hmm. it must be something you like because now we're hearing as well that you manage your husband. Is that true? Are you a manager? I don't know where that story stemmed from. Everybody has come to believe that I manage the Livingstone Foundation. Stoneboy has an entire management team. Oh. Yes, he has an entire management team, but I handle the Livingstone Foundation and not the Stoneboy brand. How do you think this came about? Just I don't. I really don't know. I, I think one time he made a joke. Um, like an inside joke, he said management 101, yeah. and then I think from there people just assumed that I was It would be bad. I'm sure you do a good job managing him. Uh, or well, is it a job offer you take? Uh, for now, I have a lot. That, yeah. And you know, Stoneboy is a huge brand, so, you know, I think a team works better. Yeah. Yes. But you, so, of course, if you handle his foundation, that means you guys work together. Definitely. We'll come Absolutely. to that, but beyond that, what's he like at home, and how are you people able to manage and have fun and I still mean, be serious? Stone is very very a very very interesting person he's um such great and positive vibes at home you know he's on the road a lot but whenever he's home there is always high spirits yeah. you always get everyone laughing he's very thoughtful he also cherishes um he's a family oriented person so he always cherishes um like those moments like yeah. family moments so it's always great to, to have, have him, him, yeah. And at home, he's Livingstone and not, you know, the Stoneboy. Stoneboy is the brand that you see out there. But at home, he is the Livingstone that we all so know. So Livingstone is what, a very quiet person or just... No, he's, like I've described him, yeah. to be fun yeah. and, you know... All that. All the high energy and all of that. Oh, but he has a lot of high energy when he performs as well. Yes, yes, yes. So let's say there's elements of that at home as well. I see. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But we'll be talking about his music very soon to mm -hmm. see how well... I know his music as against you. Okay. Are you ready for that battle? I'm ready. You are. Let's get it on. <laughs> <laughs> but beyond that, so Livingstone Foundation, do you have your own foundation as well or do you partner? So I work with I work with a foundation called um, Operation Smile Ghana and this is a not for profit organization that um, deals with surgeries for people living with cleft lip and palate. Okay. And that is one thing that I advocate for a lot mm -hmm. and we're very aggressive with that. Um, cleft lip and cleft palate is a condition where um, there's an opening in your upper lip and in your palate. Yeah. You know, your, your mouth or your lips, as you see them, does not form on its own yes. uh, when you're forming. When you're in your mother's womb, around the fourth week, that's when your face starts to form. And then there are two shelves called your maxillary processes that come and fuse mm. and then form this. But in some people, that fusion is sort of defective. So when they are born, there's a space there. Mm. And there's a lot of stigma around such people. Um, the stories are very sad. They get People get accused of um, 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 upsetting the gods, and that's why they're having such children. But yeah. this um, foundation provides free surgeries mm. for all people living. You just have to call our numbers and come in. Um, free surgeries, free transportation from wherever you are to um, the centers where we have the surgery, yeah. free meals, everything, just to make sure that you can come in. And, yeah, so we're, we're pushing that a lot. Um, the um, next one is in Koforidia from okay. the 15th of June to the 24th of June. Nice. So please, if you know anyone who has this condition, you can have them call the numbers mm. 0540-127-355 or 0502 uh, 407 860 okay. and then you just call give us your details you can come in everything is free and it's covered by the foundation that's lovely yeah. how many people have you treated so far is it thousands even thousands yeah so the next one so far i think we have about 150 people we're still taking entries for oh. people that come and you know one of the people may ask that what cost is this um some most of the time is hereditary but mm -hmm. there are also some environmental factors like drinking and smoking mm -hmm. in the first trimester, um, um, folic acid deficiency. You know when you're pregnant, you have to be taking folic acid. Yeah. But some people can't afford it, they don't know, and so they don't take these um, multivitamins, mm -hmm. and then they end up having children with these conditions. So um, when they come, we educate them a lot so that they don't, you know, have more children with this condition. So okay. that's for Operation Small Ghana. And then for the Livingstone Foundation, which I also manage, um, we're doing a lot now. Currently, we have a borehole project okay. where, you know, Stoneboys um, has been 
very vocal about galamse and then the kind of yeah. negative effects it's having recently we had the pathologist coming out to say that some of the children being yes. born in those areas are being born without genitalia mm -hmm. and some of their their eyes ears and things like that because of the kind of contamination in the water so stone boy has decided to construct four boreholes in one of the um, areas around River Pra where oh, this is happening. So, so cool. that's a major project that we're working on now. So you literally run all that for him? Yes. While he's busy on the road and yes. doing that? Yes. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. it, it must be a lot of work as mm -hmm. well. And how do you fund all this? So for now, Livingston Foundation, our major financier, our only financier is Stoneboy. So, I mean, yeah. Would you would you want people to come on board? Definitely, okay. definitely, okay. definitely. We're open to um, assistance from any because we have a lot planned. We do a lot of other things. Like recently, we had this Mother's Day celebration for some mothers from a shy mm. man. We do a cervical cancer screening and all of those things. So, I mean, there's a lot of work. It's very cost um, intensive, but then yeah. we're open to support as well. What is your favorite Stone Boy song ever? We're not talking just Fifth Dimension, but even beyond that, and you know, looking at all the songs that have come, what's your favorite? Wow. Do you um, have one that you find yourself singing, you know, all the time without even yeah, realizing? Yeah, no, someone just said Everlasting. <laughs> that that's one of my favorites as well. But um, on this new album, I think Into the Future works really well for me. Yeah. Yeah, I think but maybe ever, that's. Okay, but Everlasting would be like your all-time favorite. Hmm. That's going to be very hard, honestly, hard to pick one. Cause it would be, right? Yeah. Or do you want Mighty Lily? Yeah, Mighty Lily is a good one too. What are we going to do? Well, maybe <laughs> we should play Everlasting first. And when we get back, we have a game to play with Louisa Setacla. Okay. So don't go anywhere. This is The Day Show. We'll be right back. Uh.